Welcome to this episode of the Modern Web Podcast. I'm your host, Simone Cuomo, software architect here at this dot, taking over the reins of the podcast from Rob to give you some well-deserved time off during Thanksgiving. And today, we're going to talk with Alvaro Sabo, DevRel at Storyblock and author of Thress.js. How are you doing, Alvaro? All good, all good. And you? Uh, thanks for mm-hmm. having me today. Pretty excited to be in the podcast. It's amazing to have you around. So, um, Alvaro, can you please present yourself? Tell everybody who you are and make sure. them excited about listening mm-hmm. about you for the next 55 minutes. Sure thing, sure thing. So I'm Alvaro Saburido. I'm a DevRel at Storyblock as well. And uh, I'm the author of Tresies, which is the project that I have been doing for the last, uh, I don't know, year or so. Um, I contribute uh, mostly in Vue and 3D stuff uh, in open source. And uh, I also was the former founder of Porsche Digital here in, in Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much about me, like 10 years of experience, mostly web and mobile development. That's amazing. That's amazing. Just, just makes me, people more excited. So, um, this episode is going to be all around Thresh Jazz. It got me really excited when I first heard about it in uh, View London back in May. And I know that many people are also excited for the project. So why don't you introduce it a little bit for the audience and the people that really don't know what, it, what the project is and are probably Googling it as we speak. OK, perfect. So um, Tresies was born from the necessity of having an easy way of creating 3D experiences in the browser using view components. Okay, so I was in that time doing Bruno Simon's course on 3GS Journey, which I recommend everyone uh, that wants to learn uh, 3D. Okay, I always thought that 3D was like for superior minds, to be honest, like super difficult. And uh, once I took that course, I saw that uh, every developer could do it. If I did it, everyone can, is uh, something that you can learn. But it's true that the developer experience wasn't that great, right? So uh, I was inspired by the React community. Uh, Poimandres uh, is an organization, open source organization that created React Fiber. And I tried React Fiber in that time and I fell in love because you could basically create the 3D scenes by using React components. And I found it beautiful because uh, the amount of spaghetti code of starting the rendering, you see the WebGL, all yeah. that complex stuff was out of the picture. You have a component that comp- that was providing the context, and then you use components for the lights, for the objects, for everything. I tried to find something in Vue because I'm a Vue developer. Okay, I was involved with Vue and Nox, um, like the documentation in Spanish for Nox too. I remember with Debbie and some other things. Like I, I have been working with Vue for a long time, so I was looking for something similar in the Vue community. There were some initiatives like Trois which was the most famous one. Um, but the problem is that 3GS is a library that updates almost weekly. It's impressive how much they have updating the core. So to keep up to date with that was a really like challenging thing. And Tra was a manual wrapper. The beauty about React to Fiverr is that it's using a custom render API from React. So that was the concept that initially, okay, we are, let's try to build our own custom render, let's say, no? It, it was easy to say that to do it, to be honest. <laughs> I remember the version one. I mean, it was a uh, fine, like it was a stable. We managed to do it with views. So you will have in this Tres canvas container and you were putting Tres prefixed components like Tres uh, mm-hmm. directional light. So the same word that you will have in 3GS, only appending the thread and passing the properties, okay. like the arguments of the constructor, and there you have it. It was like magical. And something that was really important for us was trying to make it easy to update, right? So mm-hmm. it, it, it's funny to say, but we actually get in the 3 instance and we're converting all of the different instances that are inside, like the properties, all the lights, all the objects, etc., to view components to be used. So that was the initial catalog of components of view. Yeah. Right? 
um, was tough to maintain. Uh, getting into that code, it was a lot of B nodes and weird stuff, like uh, conversion between um, instances in 3GS. Um, like um, at the end, 3GS is uh, an object, okay? It's a scene object and it has a graph or a child, a child. Pretty similar of how the B node is or the bit, uh, the, the node, the DOM is, but with a different kind of object. Okay, something that is uh, represented in a canvas. Okay. Then um, I was investigating about like view custom rendering. There is a way of using the same API that view uses for the DOM. Uh, they exposed the like the methods, but the documentation wasn't there. Like it was really tough to get into it. So I really struggled in that time. And also the project was not known by anyone. So I was just trying to build a prototype, getting people involved. I started to have contributors uh, and I had a conversation with Patek, uh, Matias from, from BIT, because honestly the work that they have done in BIT, having a community that supports the open source is something that I wanted for, for this project. So we were building the core, but we wanted it to be a community driven a uh, project where everyone can extend the core and make their own packages. Talking about physics, talking about, um, I don't know, XR, like a, a virtual reality, augmented reality, CentOS, which we are going to talk about what is CentOS is. So in that moment, I was struggling. I'm not necessarily the most uh, like um, good developer, let's say, like um, heavy logically, I struggle a little bit sometimes. And I had the luck to be talking with uh, Cody Bennett and Paul from Reactor Fiber. I was talking like what I wanted to build and they helped me. They helped me out building like the prototype with the custom render API. Brilliant people, like honestly, they are React uh, developers, but they took like the custom render API in view and they helped me out doing a basic in code pen or something like that in code sandbox. It was the first prototype that we built. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, and that's how it, the second version, like the proper one with the custom render API was run. Oh, I, ca I can hear you though. Apologies. Um, uh, you did say um, uh, you know there wasn't a, there was not a lot of documentation on the custom render. Not everybody comes with an idea that requires a custom render. Let's say that uh, yeah, there's one of you know it's fair. not the hello world. <laughs> Ooh, let's build a custom render. Let's say you're doing something that just a few are trying to attend. So. There was only a post by uh, I think it was somebody from Cypress or Ionic. I don't remember well. Uh, to uh, build a PDF custom render API with, with mm. the views. So that was my only reference to work on it. Yeah, so for people that are not aware, the, the beauty, I would say, of the view uh, framework is that it's really broken down in different mm. parts. So you could really, you know, you're seeing with the um, uh, petite view, you, you could take the, the, the reactive part of view out mm -hmm. completely with nothing to do with the DOM and use it. You can take the render and use it. Uh, so I remember watching... Um, 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 a training a long time ago from Ivan, and he was saying how they built it in, in modules and how much that's actually paying off, like yourself. You were able to just take, create a custom render and remove right. everything else that is associated with the DOM. So it's just, well, not in this case, but you could, and, and that's fantastic to, to hear that the, their hard work is paying off. Um, and I had to say that the structure, like, uh, since there was not that many documentation, okay, what I did is what I think everyone should do in a certain point, because also writing documentation for everything is really hard, especially in a framework so big, right? So I totally recommend everyone that is building open source, take your time to get into source code, get into GitHub, check the source code, check how you, like I check how you was building the DOM with uh, mm -hmm. with the custom render API and try to replicate that with the scene graph. Oh, okay. And that's the nice. way like I managed with, you. like w once I, I understood the concept of the custom render API with Kali, then all the work was done in that API. So how to create nodes, how to uh, mm -hmm. insert mm -hmm. nodes, mm -hmm. update nodes and those kind of things. Yeah, you know, replicate what is there. So go through, go through the source code, 
um, you know, read it through because you're right, it's, it's impossible to really document everything. And there are some of the things that are very deep um, that, that you don't expect them to document because you don't expect no, you know, contributors to, uh, to, uh, to work on it. But oh, that, that sounds like a very interesting, you know, evening side project for you to think, let's go and create a custom render. But it's amazing that you were able to, to get through the first hurdle and then creating the video. So that's fantastic. I um, didn't know what about... I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> well, like every side project you do, right? Spread the hundreds and hundreds of side projects. Um, uh, we're going to cover about the open source later on, but um, I did an open source project in the past, many uh, different side projects. And what I realized is that when you create something open source, when you know that there's a community around it, when you know that you that people are relying on you, people are waiting for you, it gives you that extra yes. drive, right? To go the extra mile. If you would have done TrustJS by yourself, thinking about just uh, monetizing it, it may be a chance it would have been left on the shelf unfinished. But I think it's that community. Mm -hmm. It's that community gives you that extra superpower. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That that that's why. Like, um, we we met in Vue.js London when I actually open sourced it, and for me, it was really important to open source it because at the beginning, you have this imposter syndrome of okay, people is gonna be seeing my code and my work openly, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's, <laughs> there is this fear of okay, you know, there are people that are way more talented than me. I'm gonna put my code there and to be judged, but it's not that like yeah, that yeah. at all, right? I built something that I wanted to build. I wanted to be uh, able to use Vue and 3D. Then I thought, okay, this is something that a lot of people can use. So let's mm -hmm. let's let's open it. Absolutely. But I'm gonna work mm -hmm. in it until it's a little bit more stable. So mm -hmm. when I open it, it's ready for people to play with to to enjoy. And that was also an advice from from Patak that it it was really good. So at the end, once I I open it. A lot of contributors started to join more than yes. way more than I expected. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of uh, amazing conversations. We opened a Discord channel um, with the community, like, okay, what do you want to build? I want to build a game. I want to build, and we started to fixing bugs, creating things like that interaction that the library needs with the community. It's um it, it's it's the extra usage, it's that movement. So um yeah, it's you know having um um you know having contributors, having people using the tool. I think there's does nothing else and improve the tool itself. So that's uh, that's great to hear. Um what um um what in, what is what interests me is to hear what is uh, what connects a uh, a developer. Mm -hmm with 3D library. So what really was the connection between you getting interest? So I've seen the the, the Porsche, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the Porsche uh, project that you got on your website and probably was already something there in the past, but what makes you, you know, what brought you into the 3D? Game developer? Yeah, kind of. Like, Is that your it dream? Was, it, it was something personal. Like um, I'm a telecommunications engineer, but I actually wanted to be a game developer when I was young. Unfortunately, um, in Venezuela, there were no options rather than go to United States, and I didn't have the money at that time. So I ended up um, studying in a telecommunications engineer and learning how to program. But I always been really creative, so I was hoping to go to, I don't know, front-end, because at the end, front-end, it was coding. I love coding, and also it was my way to be creative as well. So I decided to drop like, uh, I didn't work that much as telecommunications engineer. And uh, I is like being a front end developer for uh, around 10 years. Uh, I even paid some part of my career uh, with that job. And eventually I saw that it was possible to do 3D on, on the web, right? So it was like, okay, maybe I can try to, I don't know, do some models from video games, like tr take a character, render it, so I, I saw the the the, the Bruno Simon's uh, course and I said, okay, why not? I, I I had to say that I was like one year before that I learned how to use Blender before using the programming part. Blender is a software that allows you to model and create three D uh, models, animation, M more than that. But it's an incredible open source project that is driven by the community. Um, so I learned how to do 3d before actually know how to program it so that helped 
that that really helped. I, I cannot. It helps, right? Way. Because th there's a lot of understanding of 3D because of the 3D shapes of the lights of the, the camera of the you know. There's so much more uh, than is just uh, the so. It's reading something will be hard unless you understand what you're reading. There's a lot of verbiage that needs to be learned. Uh, so do surely that helped for you. Yeah, the concepts are the same and it's easily translatable from one software to another. So like animations, for example, I do the animations in Blender and then I transpose them into 3GS and play them oh, in okay. 3GS, which is, ah. if you think it that way, it's kind of cool. <laughs> And uh, well, we're living in a very cool time. I think um, I like um, I do coding with children in school, and mm -hmm. uh, I always tell them how things started. That 20, 30 years ago, you know, punch cards and things, and the computer oh. were so slow, and now we can just go with the click of a button. We have more powers than than the the lunar, uh, you know, lunar spacecraft that was sent to the moon. That's true story. Like all devices, like nowadays, a device can handle this WebGL like it was nothing but it's not easy like i can tell you rendering objects in the canvas on like a decent frames per second it's not trivial <laughs> it's like, no, it's, yeah you're right a very small change can make your application be very slow um, mm -hmm. um i did a little bit of game development the four side projects and fun and i i could see like yeah everything is great and then adding something and everything so yes indeed not trivial at all um you mentioned something called centos um, yeah. I've seen it on the website, I haven't investigated further, and I haven't heard about it much. So, what is CentOS? I think the best way of describing CentOS is, is the view use of Tress. Okay? So, uh, Tress is the word for tree in Spanish, because, of course, the French word was already taken. So, <laughs> I use the Spanish one, I'm Venezuelan, so that fits. And CentOS is... The way, like tres cientos, is the way to say three hundred. And it was a funny analogy to say uh, everything you can do it with the core, but if you want to extend it and have abstractions, composables, to load the model, to easily use orbit controls, that's cientos. Oh, that's amazing! Nice. So that's a very good abstraction. So cientos is the is the branches to the tree. Um, as, we as actually got help from people from some authors from UUs for the concept of Cientos and help like mm -hmm. how to build some components that are so composables. That same mm -hmm. analogy we tra transmitted there and I'm really grateful that we did because Cientos is yeah. what it is because of that. Yeah. For, for people that don't know what UUs is, is a collection of composables uh, that really speed up your development when you use Vue. So, for example, there's composable for um, intercept observer, or composable for when clicking outside, or composable for mouse look scroll. So, is the is the is the is the logic that we always was well, until now we always replicated over and over again in our sites has been uh, abstracted. Um, I use view use all the time when I'm teaching view. So, when people say, "What is a composable?" You go on the view website and let them understand. Say, look, these are the composable. Yeah, let really understand what. And, and it's fantastic that you're doing the same with the with CentOS, CentOS because it it will help people to understand. This is the library, and these are the features. You can build it your own if you want, but exactly. these are the features. So you're really going to speed up massively uh, people's mm -hmm. development. So that's great. And do you get um? Is it is it community based? Is it contrib contributor based? Right now it's contributor base. We have a core team. Uh, Jaime and Andre has been doing an amazing job uh, because honestly, like uh, handling an ecosystem, it has a lot of work. Consider that I also work in my normal job, like mm -hmm. seven mm -hmm. hours or eight hours per day uh, as a story block devro. So, and in that time I was in another company. So like, it, it, this is something that I do on my extra time and also my weekends, right? Mm -hmm. Having the help of the community and also, it's like for me, it's beautiful to see how motivated people can get from something that you build. And it started to mm -hmm. give their value on the community until it becomes theirs. You're like, right now, I'm only checking a couple of PRs and opening like really tough stuff, but the rest is completely done by the community there. And they have yeah. been doing abstractions that are crazy that I have no idea how to how they work. Like, I'm not approving because I know that the people's genius. <laughs> 
because I don't know how it's working. You know. put the merch and it shows your name on top, Alvaro merch. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Like the you, author, like, um, for me, it's really important that everyone's uh, also feel that they are contributing. So, like, um, I shared the releases. We created a Twitter uh, and tried to promote like everyone's work. I also, uh, for example, Francesco Michelini, uh, he's a oh. judge from uh, awards. He was creating some templates, amazing templates for review and Knox. And uh, Cientos wasn't the, the was the first one, but then it uh, opened the door to more uh, packages that we are working on. Right. Yes. I can say that, for example, we have in close to alpha the post-processing one, which is a way wow. to create effects on pro post-processing. Uh, to give an example, uh, for example, pixelation. There is one effect that you can pass that pixelates the whole canvas and is performant. It does wow. it in a way that is performant. Or video games. Oh, wow. uh, when you play yeah. video games like Borderlands, Borderlands to yeah. do the borders, they are actually using post-processing techniques. Oh, wow, wow, fantastic. Yeah, so, you know, with CentOS, you open up the possibility for more of these kind of uh, applied mm -hmm. things to come in. That's fantastic. Um, this is, you know, I'm getting more and more into this as we continue to speak. So that I think, uh, you know, our listeners are really going to enjoy. Um, um, yeah, I think you did mention it already at the start, um, and um, uh, you know you said about a couple of uh, of real life example. But it'll be interesting for the listener to know uh, where do you see these actually being used. So of course there may be interaction where this is used probably from uh, from uh, game development. I know that there is a lot of really library existing front end library um, such as FaceJS and Constructor that they are built on top of of you know such as you know something like this, but. Where do you see it? Where, 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 what examples can you share? It probably will give some links as well to the, to the community. No, but that's an amazing question because, um, like, we are trying to promote that all the things that you can do with 3D mm -hmm. on the web, right? So um, I have been building, for example, in StutterBlock some demos for a scroll telling, which is a technique that you scroll and you have this parallax you know, can affect okay. with objects okay. that are uh, transformed and the camera moves and everything. And it's a really interesting way of creating an immersive experience for your users to get into your narrative, mm -hmm. your scroll telling, right? That's one uh, use case. Another use case that is a lot in the in, in the market is for Nike. They created a 3D um, product configurator, let's say, for their shoes. Mm -hmm. So you were able to see your shoe and change the colors and such. Um, so I built something similar with cars. Like uh, mm -hmm. it was a prototype and you were able to actually select the colors in the story block, like as a content editor, uh, choose the colors of your uh, car configurator and then the materials were available on the fly mm -hmm. on the web with the 3D, right? Um, but that's not the only place it can work. Right now, there are two or three projects that are using Thress in production. So, like, last month was really important for us. Like, three official products are using it, okay? Wow. Uh, with Nux as well. We have the Nux module. And they are using it for that, for immersive experience to enhance, like, uh, the interaction of their users in, in the websites. Um, it also requires, like, a concrete use case because mm -hmm. it's performance heavy like rendering yeah. on canvas even if we manage to have a really good performance let's see it, it is a canvas right so we mm -hmm. we need to understand what, what, when like the limits of it um but there are people creating games already like uh which mm -hmm. i think is not like um somebody created one version of the aviator i have the link uh, around so we will share it uh so you can see it nice. from empty loop uh, and that opens another uh, door. So somebody that has been supporting us a lot is called Berekia, which is the founder of Web Game Dev. So it's a community oh, wow. of games in HTML, like promoting that we can build mm -hmm. also games, not in Unity, not in Unreal, not okay. in Word, but actually in the web using React to Fiber, using Threttle, which is the like um, the analogy of uh, Threat yes in, in the Svelte. For example, and mm -hmm. there is also Angular 3. So there are a lot of like these custom renderers for the different frameworks that can be used to create games as well. Yeah, and and what we've seen with the web is um, it opened up 
possibility you opened up the industry so before you know where that some just native applications of windows and mac so a company had to invest hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds to create something mm -hmm. then the web came around i was like wait a minute i'm gonna do this with web. Web, a creative form and, and really opened up right the market exploded so i'm really uh, looking forward to see uh, more of this actually uh, pushing the indie games industry forward and All i right. think we're going to get some fantastic games out of it i'm 100 percent sure about it um uh, good um before we go forward i want to just spend some words uh for from our our, our advertisers um and we want to take a moment and acknowledge our sponsors digital labs digital labs is a development consultancy that is trusted by top industry companies, including Stripe, Xero, Wikimedia, DocuSign, and Twilio. This dot takes a hands-on approach by providing tailored development strategies to help you approach your most pressing challenges with clarity and confidence. Whether it's bridging the gap between business and technology or modernizing legacy system, you will find a breadth of experience and the knowledge you need. Check out how at Digital Labs, can empower your tech journey at this dot .co. That's T H I S D O T dot C O. And now let's go back to our conversation with Alvaro. So, Alvaro, um, we spoke about ThreadJS, um, and uh, throughout the conversation, we seem to always go back to the open source part of it. Uh, so, as, we, as you mentioned already, you made it public in May uh, in Vue.js London. Um, I was there to, to see it, and I was myself curious and forced, forked and, 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 li and um, uh, you know, uh, liked the, the GitHub repo. Um, was that your first open source experience? And I know you mentioned already that, you know, reaching out to the community to get, but was that your first open source experience? What have you got to share with people that will probably want to get into being an open source maintainer? So tell us everything about it. Sure. Um, it wasn't my first ex uh, like experience with open source. Let's say that I failed um, several times in open source. <laughs> I created some packages that were going anywhere. But like in that moment, for me, it was okay. I'm having something in GitHub, right? Um, I'm getting better as a, de uh, as a developer. I also was involved in inner source in some companies. And I get I, I started to get this passion about the open source community and checking like what cool projects. Like you, for me, was an inspiration as well um, to see, okay, you can build something with the community. So that was always like, okay, I want to do that someday, right? Uh, I created from UI uh, components on Angular and Ionic in that time mm -hmm. to a dynamic form, um, like a view dynamic form components uh, that mm -hmm. were pretty okay. But uh, like I, I, I learned a lot about view by doing it. Uh, it was a learning process for me, but uh, it was not necessarily a good library, let's say. I'm so happy the form kit came and just basically do that. <laughs> took yeah. over from you. Yeah, yeah, took over because I wasn't not maintaining it anymore. And I was like, um, I, I, I suggest all all the people that was using my library, like, no, go with form kit. Like this is the real yeah. the real thing. Um, and I thought then um, I'm gonna create like a starters for people. So I started creating content on YouTube, and I was uh, highly involved and enthusiast of Beat like the whole movement of it and what it's supposed oh, yeah. to the open source. So Anfu, uh, Patek, uh, Joaquin, like uh, Byte Steam as well. And yeah, I created some starters for Beat and 3GS because believe it or not, all the examples in 3GS was done with Webpack at the time and right. with classes as well. So everything was like a little bit oldish, let's say. Mm -hmm. And I made a modern beat kind of thing, inspired mm -hmm. with Bytes and Bytepress. Yeah. Uh, something like, okay, I started for 3GS and, and Beat that you can use right away, or with Vue as well, you know. Yeah. And I love the way you, when you said Webpack, you were like, you won't believe it is built with Webpack. Your voice went down because you were you're like people will know that the building with Webpack. Wow. Um, and it's nice that you know you go back to mention Vit. Is um, uh, when we talk about open source, view um, view a great open source. Uh, we know that if we go to even you and tell him, hey, you're the creator of you, you will tell you view is, is handled by the communities. The community yeah. brings it forward, but Vit is a step even forward. Like 
like even created it, but the community is driving it all the way for. So oh. I think it's it's the real pinnacle of open source from what I can see. I may be wrong, and, but and also it's what brought together all frameworks, everything. And yeah, that's that's something that I love that is framework agnostic and it bring everyone together. Because yeah. to be fair, as a developer and devro, I'm kind of tired of the framework wars. Sometimes are funny, mm -hmm. okay, but there are so many posts in Instagrams focusing on that. Let people enjoy the libraries that they want. If they want to work mm -hmm. in any library, it's what we would like to do. You know, like um, don't Can worry I... about it. Like uh, build stuff together, right? And that's something that Bit managed to make. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you attend the the BitConf, the the latest BitConf, but it was crazy. Like the amount uh, I, I was lucky enough to talk about press yes there actually. Um, it was crazy the amount of different technologies that are using Bit. Yeah. Trace yes is possible because of Bit. Like all the packages, the structure is with Bit. Bytes for test. Mm -hmm. uh histoire for some uh like components like the ui and so on mm -hmm. um byte press for documentation which yeah. for us is, has been amazing like we can embed or view components with trust yes inside of the documentation so people can test it <laughs> they're like <laughs> it's just you know Beautiful. it feels like a dream right it feels like a dream can it do this yes it works straight out of the box it works and it's <laughs> the same developer experience across the whole ecosystem so if you work in one of the packages in press it's going to be the same as you work in the core or you work like is it exactly the same and that's because of bit yeah, hundred percent. Um, we'll go back to WordPress and other things, but um, I want to go back to the open source part. So, um, like you said, you know, you did your own packages. I got loads of repositories as well that are open source, but in reality, you know, probably they're like by two people, myself and my mom. Um, so, you know, not not many things are really liked, and and saying open source has a different meaning. So, I think with TrustJS, you went to the the proper definition of open source community based project. So something that is driven, something that needs to be maintained, something that needs to be under. Um, what do you see as the hardest part of an open source project maintainer of this size? What, what do you see? What can you share? Like, yeah. No, of course, like everything, it has their uh, good things and bad things. Uh, mm -hmm. I will say that the good parts uh, overcome completely the bad parts, but uh, it's a lot of work. Let's face it, like it is a lot of work. And it's completely different from the work that you might be used to, okay? Open source mm -hmm. is a different world from inner source or company-based projects, okay? Um, you get to understand that first, most of the people is not being paid by this. So they do it mm -hmm. because of passion, because they want to build something. So um, there is a kind of etiquette, uh, but it's like an empathy etiquette. Yeah. Uh, when you're working on 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 open source, like you're always trying to help, the best way you can help an author is or sponsoring them, uh, yeah. like monetary. If you're a company that are using the open source, like really consider to to support them because it's important to maintain that. And also uh, opening tickets, helping with documentation. I always say, like, if you want to start uh, in open source, you don't need to create anything at the beginning help out fixing some bugs, help out with translating uh, documentation. I did that for Nux, like it was one of my first PRs. Yeah, yeah, the translation, yeah. And then you get more excited, you met more people, uh, people, uh, what I love about open source people is really welcoming. Yeah. yeah. There's always spot side, but that if, when you create a community, that's the, the the hardest part is create that you want people that are involved in the project that not yeah. not just using it for their own will, but when you get those correct people, the one that really care about what you're building, it becomes like a big family. Like you mentioned as well, uh, you know that you know you create a discord. It brings you that drive to them. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's and you good. have to be that, uh, also really like really passionate um, because maybe you want to deliver, you want to, and you need to uh, uh, like take that out because we all have like um family uh mm -hmm. work so sometimes uh the team core members uh man i cannot work on this until next year because i'm changing job and it's absolutely fine like um it, it's something that you will build over time 
And that's the beauty of it. At the beginning, it's quite kind of hard. You want to deliver, deliver cheap, you know. But I think that's that's uh, the fault of the social media and Twitter in general for developers. Mm -hmm. We are seeing so many people shipping things that we are like expressing ourselves to ship right. and ship more. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, the, 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 the ecosystem sometimes, it can be a, a beautiful thing when you're using it for your own personal needs because there's more and more and things updates. But when you are behind the scene, when you're the person that need to deliver so much and so quickly, you feel that pressure, 100%. Um, going back at the very start, you said the Trust Jazz um, was created almost one year ago. Yep. So Trust is getting close to be one. So is there anything excited? Or oh, have you got anything that you can share? Because it's a big, you know, it's a big, big year, big anniversary. There has to be something. For us. I have a surprise. So um, to to the audience and everyone in the community, uh, some of uh, people already know, uh, but we are launching something next week. Okay, it's a surprise. So uh, wait for mm -hmm. for uh, the announcement in Twitter and such. But it's also something that demonstrates how uh, Tresius can also be used with other technologies rather than Vue. Um, mm -hmm. Astro, let's say. Oh, uh, I have been oh, doing some oh. stuff with Astro. I can I already say that Astro and Tres works. Ooh, Chef kiss. We found, <laughs> we, we found the marriage. <laughs> Now it's we amazing. I have been working with Alien as well. Uh, I did a 3D model of Houston that was really fun for a video. Um, but yeah, we have something for you next week. And we are working right now on uh, getting, like, the trust score is already stable. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we have no major uh, bugs to work on it. And that could be two things like it needs more uh, adaptation in the community or like more people using it. Of course, the people or, using it, people will find different. Or we did a good job and, and it's stable enough, right? Mm -hmm. So we are handling that. CentOS is growing exponentially. Um, a lot of new abstractions are coming, really interesting ones. Uh, portals, for example, is something that we want to work on. I just released the HTML one that allows you to embed HTML inside of the 3D scene. So you can embed your web page into a laptop model, for example, and have it like in the 3D. Oh. Fancy stuff, I know. No, oh, oh, this Fancy is interesting. It's nice. that, that one was really cool. And there are a lot more that are available already in React to Fiber. And what we're trying to do is uh, get inspired by the in innovation that they're doing there and try to get it into the view community. The view community needs to adapt a little bit more um, to, okay, we can do 3D with Vue. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's our job, like trying to promote this uh, in the Vue community to help developers to build also 3D. And that they know that they can build 3D with it, right? Post-processing is uh, in the making. We already have the whole thing. We just need to do the uh, finish the documentation, put a little more filters. We have like eight. 10 normal fil filters, um, but we are taking it slow. Also, the core team that is working on it has uh, other priorities like work related. And we need more people, uh, to be honest, mm -hmm. like we need more contributors. Um, the thing is that it's a complex ecosystem to contribute with because you would need both 3D and view expertise, okay? We try to do it as smooth as possible for people. And there are people that do like really impressive they don't need any onboarding they just look at the code and they start fixing things it's like there was one guy that fixed it uh Epsilon, it fixed the dev tools so uh Tres was breaking the dev tools of you because it, it was view dev tools are not ready for non dom related non dom related uh, okay they were trying to read the dom and probably break out exactly hey, this is not possible. he managed to fix that i don't know how he fixed it and I was talking, okay. man, I love you. Like, um, let me sponsor you, you know, like, <laughs> I love you. Um, um, yeah, you, you know. But for, for next year, I can already tell you, um, there are people that are creating POCs, like uh, production-based POCs yes. for virtual reality and augmented reality with Tress. I was so actually going to ask that if there is a, because that's, you know, you can see that that's where the industry is pushing. Yes. So with all this, you know, the Quest 3 and the, and the uh, uh, Apple Vision, is they're all moving towards there. So this could actually create a tool for that. So there, there's already implementation there for that. Right? 
Yeah, the, the, the person that is working on it created a private repo. Um, I have to do this with like create the, the base repo and he's going to copy his job there. But I already saw the demo and it's working it's like with the GTL of models of for like uh, uh, with trust. Like it's a, a Nox application that he opens with the meta quest and he opens the browser and go immersive mode. And then he's inside. You can see the hands. And I was, I, I didn't know you can do oh, that. <laughs> and, uh, nice. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. It's, it's, um, it, it, you know, when, when I look back and when you mention it in uh, uh, View London, I <laughs> first went, wow. And then it was like, how would I use it? You know, the, the, the urge yeah. of wanting to use it. Uh, but the more we talk about it, the more you can see that there is so much use of this that could actually really, really be uh, beneficial for the whole industry. We're not just talking about the little animation corner. We're talking about real life usage. You know, it could be a, a shopping, you know, shopping yep. site showing you with your clothes. So it can be, you know, like you say, the car that you make it customize it. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot that can be done. Even better, we can do it with you. I, I just got data to like try to convince um to, to make more innovation projects about this. Uh, the fashion industry is the one that is spending the most money on VR and XR experiences for their clients. Oh, yeah. So I leave it there. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it, you know, they are the one gaining it. You know, nowadays with the shops closing, loads of people are buying online. And I'm one of those persons that still tell my wife I cannot buy it online. I need to see it. Yes. That's what VR yes. will come into place, you know, see something, you know, and, uh, um, as it's great. Um, um, Alvaro, if people would like to get started, um, so what is the best way for somebody to get involved, both as a user and as a community member? So what would be the best way for them to get started? So the best way, uh, contact me directly, like DM yeah. in Twitter, always open, uh, or join the Discord. We have an uh, introduction like a uh, channel where you can meet other people there and like talk what are you trying to build with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Also the best place to get help because we like people are active there helping. Uh, like sometimes the, the core team members, we cannot respond to everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Time-based, like with, there is not yeah. enough hours on the day. Uh, we would love to do it. So the community actually take that part like take also the ownership of that part and that's beautiful because you can also see like if people getting to start uh using the project they understand it mm -hmm. um i have some tutorials in the youtube channel like a series of tutorial mm -hmm. on how to use stress like getting started okay. and i want to create like we have a contribution guide um but right now it's going to be better if you just uh tell us in the discord I want to contribute where you want to contribute and we help mm -hmm. you. Like we get you yes. onboarding. You find we... something easy, right? Because you yeah. don't want to try to get something. Easy. Let's jump into a call. Let's do a pair programming session. They already like onboarded a lot of people like that. And uh, they start like really quick to use it um, without any, pro but there is a learning curve in terms of 3 years sometimes. So that's, of that's fair. Of course. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's uh... I think expected if you want to get into 3D uh, yeah. is, uh, you know, there, there has to be a little learning curve. Uh, I also noticed that uh, on your website, you have uh, both a playground with loads of examples and also um, a real playground, like a Vue.js playground where you can, people can actually write it on the browser. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's a surprise that, uh, I don't know if you know uh, Jael, um, Jael Gijo, uh, Taul. Uh, he's the author of Pinso, uh, okay. CSS on GS. And uh, he also was author of a lot of things in Vue use and Vue motion. Okay. So uh, we met uh, each other in Vue.js Amsterdam. Uh, he was okay. giving a talk there. He got interested into the project. And he told me, okay, one day I'm going to build a sandbox, like a three, um, like the Vue.js one, the single file uh, sandbox playground yeah. thing, but for Tress. And I say, okay, I will wait for it. And uh, <laughs> well, like long time but uh he he just messaged me like uh two weeks ago and say hey do you want to see something and i was like no you have it right well so that's I, that's really just a couple of weeks old then yeah yeah it's just we oh. just released it oh hey um, that's another news for the listener there if you haven't seen it yet go on uh, uh play.trestjazz.org and uh, experience the beauty of uh in browser uh development 
because until now we were using stack blitz which also mm -hmm. like kudos to stack blitz they have been super supportive to the project they created yeah. a template for us like getting the started template most of our reproductions are stack blitz reproductions okay, fantastic. and also yeah. we had uh like in our uh, github flows we're getting fancy uh, we have like the code mm -hmm. flows things to actually uh, pull requests, check the pull requests in the cloud. So uh, nowadays, being an open source developer is fancy. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you can uh, and wait until uh, ChatGPT six comes in, and then you Ooh. do. You know, they'll do. You know, we're gonna have an Alvaro bot. And Alvaro, but then I, I, I will put like the the mascot, like the official mascot of Tresies is the square, uh, like the cube with the eyes. Yeah. Because uh, that's a joke from Blender. Blender always have this default queue that everyone deletes. Okay, as soon as it's done. <laughs> Great. So are we given a, a new job? And now it's the mascot yeah. of... <laughs> <laughs> can you see? It got fired. It got fired. You know, you can actually do a marketing campaign. You know, the cube has been fired. We hired it. You know, the new CEO <laughs> of uh, Chester's. <laughs> So maybe we can we can use that mascot like for for that like a little AI uh, mascot um, to yeah. build 3D mm -hmm. scenes. I know the React guys are probably already doing some things like generators. Mm -hmm. They're way more advanced right now okay. uh, for yeah, 3D. So I'm really looking forward to see how you can build 3D scenes with chat GPT prompts. That will be amazing. I'll... Oh, oh, that would be good. I I was extremely impressed, and I mean extremely when I saw the Harry Potter. Room, ah, the potion that, room. Uh, the potion room is just beautiful. I don't know. I just every time I look at it, I was like, just did such a good job. So you did a fantastic job with that potion room. I, I really love. Thank it. you, thank you very much. Uh, actually, um, let me share sure. the. Let me share. It's in the playground. That trias yes dot org, uh, mm -hmm. along with a lot of like cool experiments. But for the audience yeah. uh, later, um, I have the link here, uh, so you, yeah. you can. Check out it. Um, add it as well in the show notes. Yeah, the potion room. Oh, that was uh, just a beauty. Um, yeah, good. We spoke about um, we spoke a lot about TrustJS, open source, and everything else. I think um, as both me and you are view developers, and we you know talked a little bit about view here and there. So let's just spend one or two words about view. Um, the first one is what um, is about what you used. You know, not just the view framework itself, but um, what did you use from the ecosystem uh, to support you? So I heard that you use Vitpress. Yes. Uh, I heard that you also use uh, Vtest. Uh, I heard that you use Vit, again, they're um, language agnostic, but still very strongly part of the community. So um, yeah, just spend some words on, for example, I love Vitpress myself. So what what has been your uh, your experience on Vitpress? Uh, Amazing. For, for um, super, like uh, I wasn't that strong in terms of the documentation. Okay, I learned it with this project how to do proper um, documentation, and it was so easy to do it with with Vipers. Um, everything was already there, like syntax highlighting. I could share uh, examples of the code with the code. I also could like change the tabs and have several tabs like for pnpm, npm, like oh, enhancing the documentation yes. a lot uh, with Vipers, and it was working. Like I deployed it, it works, and Netlify like no problem um i have done all the documentation with it uh also from view since we were talking about view use we use mm -hmm. view use a lot especially in cientos okay. when we have some abstractions for a scroll uh controls between the browser and the objects mm -hmm. or resilient stuff like the html one uses uses scroll use windows so mm. everything all those composables we are heavily using them inside of of the ecosystem um creating a state that you can share between the different packages that was tough um, with provide inject and such okay. um what else like view well the custom render api from you uh i do think that i'm going to create some content in the future i would like to create some content about how you can create your own custom render api i think it will be worth it because there is a lot of cool things that we could do with the custom render api out there yeah um, yeah probably probably they, probably the 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 you know the first entry point is a bit higher so many people probably have given up uh on 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 their experience of it but 
you know, if you can help other people, they, they will all probably open up the possibilities for, uh, you know, with all these new things we got, right? We got, uh, you know, Echo Show and and uh, fridges and, and washing machine, all of them are different UIs uh, yeah. that wanted to not, uh, not always achieve in CSS. Um, so it may require us to do something uh, unique uh, as you did yourself. There are um, some, some projects around the community right now, especially launched by Nox, the DevTools thing. Um, oh yeah. th there are people that are trying to um, do that in view only, not with Nox or Bit, like Bit based that you can use it in React and such. And that will open a lot of possibility for tools. To give you an idea, we could create a tool like that to check the scene graph, the rendering. Uh, mm -hmm. How many frames? How many geometries for performance reason? How many frames per second are you using? Those kind of things. So we are gonna still be using Vue as much as it can offer. Uh, also, I'm excited for the new things that are coming. I remember I saw that there are some new uh, modes uh, in mm -hmm. in the making. Uh, I wonder how we could use it for three years if possible, like for press yes. Um, it's exciting, like it's always evolving. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's always a race to try to catch up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly. World, world, world. <laughs> mostly. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, we never catch up, right? We, we just get closer, and as soon as you almost touch it, they're gone. Here we are, version X and Y. Uh, but that's that's you know, that's unfortunately comes with the perk of uh, being uh, in the IT industry. Mm. Um, Regarding Vue, um, I know, you know, again, uh, both me and you are Vue.js developers. We love Vue, but um, what was the reason for choosing Vue to actually use Press.js? Was it just a personal choice uh, or what else? Or, would you, or was there anything, anything within the framework that made the use of Vue actually simple for you? The, the, it was a combination of things because uh, I was comfortable by using Vue. Uh, I have a lot of knowledge in Vue in that time. But also there was the chance of creating something in Vue because in React I was already created. So I could contribute in React and make it uh, even better or like, can I create my own maybe? Also in Svelte or Angular, there was already something. So it was the Vue community that wasn't enjoying what I think is beautiful about the 3D development, like the possibility of creating stuff. Uh, so that was another reason and the composition API in my case, mm -hmm. um, the whole ecosystem is built basically with composables and a composition API. And I really defender of that. I remember I didn't like that much of options API in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting discussion because I understand that there are a lot of people that are, wants to go back to it. And there are some defenders about the, the uh, composition <laughs> API. I mean, it's yeah. really interesting. Interesting indeed. So, um, you know, I usually do ask the question composition API versus social API. So you answered it. You are a, you're a composition API. Uh, yeah. You're on the, you're on the left. I'm on the right corner. Uh, so you're I more teach... options API. Oh, and I'll tell you why. Because I teach um, I teach coding to a lot of new developers. Okay. And I teach Vue to lots of Vue developers. So I'm writing a, a book with Pat now on Vue.js developer, and we're doing it with the composition API because it's more aligned. Okay. But what I realized it was much easier to really make right. that yeah. You know, it was easier for people to coming in to say, this is props. The, and people would easily learn and understand where things were. But with the composition API, is great for experienced developers, 100%. Correct. I can use it and it, I would use it all the time because the component will, with the compos composable and the script setup, it's just so easy to do. But for somebody that is learning, Hmm. That flexibility make it a bit harder for them to get started. So there I should be kind of a flow. More. There I should be a flow agree. of you start with Option API and after one year experience you move over. Or maybe we do dump component with Option API and the main component with Composition API. I think we lost that. You know, the the entry point for app view became a little bit harder because of that. I I, I couldn't agree more with you because it's true. Like for experienced developer is developer experience for us. But is there a lot of magic around, right? Mm -hmm. So I can imagine that for new like people that are learning view, yeah. the view options API is proper. And I think it's really like valuable that they see how they build it with uh, the options API and mm -hmm. what problems the composition API solves. 
and then you have a criteria, right? You have exactly. you know how when or how to choose which one, and that's right. super valuable for a developer. And and even more, you know, mostly ninety nine percent of what you learn in the Option API can easily be brought really across to the composition API, yeah. so you don't lose anything. So at right. the end of the day, if you learn what the com computed is in the Option API, the only thing you have to do is wrap it in the computed method. So right. I, you know, I feel maybe that will be the move forward. Who knows? Or maybe chat GPT or something, you can write it in Option API and then translate it and then you can move it. Well, I'm guilty of migrating some components in the past. I cannot say the project from view two to view three by using oh! <laughs> if, it, if it works if it works you know I mean, what? you know and for testing i i got to be like you cannot conceal in everything right so if you right. are right. focusing on some parts there are some parts that you are going to like most for me it's testing i'm not good at testing i know how to do it i learned uh, mostly integration testing i do know mm -hmm. But unit testing is not something that I do a lot, okay? And the problem that we have in Trust yes, is that it's really difficult to test things with the canvas, like not so makes sense, mm. right? But uh, I use it for like testing or I use it, oh, of course I revise it like I, but yeah, yeah. sometimes like the documentation, most of the documentation in Cientos, it was me getting like the the component that was the well paper, written yeah. like the well documented by itself and then say hey chat gpt can you create a markdown documentation around this with usage and a table of props that was the best thing a table <laughs> of props and you fill the whole thing with all the props and the description That's, the four yeah, values yeah. and i was like yeah <laughs> It's mind blowing, right? That you know the time that you save is is beyond. Um, you know, like you said, it is not a is not a matter of uh, chat GPT or all this AI to doing the work for you, but it's saving on the things that they can do best, and and it's really just time consuming. Do a table in Markdown? I've exactly. never done it right. You always go columns and then it's it's the worst thing to do ever. So yeah, just just that is worth every penny. Or checking or checking the TypeScript of like um uh, nowadays I consider myself better in TypeScript because I learn a lot, mm -hmm. but there are some times that it gets really tough, and I was okay. Can you help me? Where the problem is? How can I create a generic around this? And it works. So I couldn't be like I'm gonna be completely transparent. And if you're building a open source project, really consider using AI in your favor. Because I, I wouldn't have the whole documentation that I, we have in, in, in Trust without, without AI. That's good. For okay. instance. That's a good use of it. Uh, there's always good about AI. That's a precisely good use of what AI can do for the industry and support people going through. So it's fantastic. Um, good, good, good. So that's all I have for today. Uh, we spent already 57 minutes talking. It's been a fantastic time together. So um, as you all know, the conversation doesn't stop here. People can continue to chat with us on social. So people can find me uh, on Twitter at Zelig880. And what about yourself, Alvaro? Uh, how can people find yourself and trust us? So same as my handle, Alvaro Sabu. Okay, so at Alvaro Sabu, uh, the first uh, V is the small one and the second one is the big one. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me know when you share in in socials and uh, yep. let's retweet it um, from the Tresius account as well fantastic uh, also I want to thank your sponsor Distal Labs they would like to remind you that approach your most pressing tech challenges with confidence leveraging Distal Labs tailored development strategies trusted by industry giants like Meta Google and T-Mobile they specialize in bridging business and technology gaps modernizing the legacy system, and ensuring sustainable uh, application architecture. Discover how Distal Labs can empower your organization at this.co. That is T-H-I-S-T-O-T dot C-O. Thank you, everybody, for listening. See you soon. Thank you for having me. Ciao, ciao.